Hey y'all, it's Wednesday night happy hour, and this is If You Drink on Vet Radio Syndicate. I'm your host, Heather Clark, and I'm just hanging out here this Wednesday night on Vet Week. You all know what that means. Vet Week means that you all get to hop on with me, whether it's on camera or in the comments. We get to hang out, have a drink. My drink of choice tonight is Red Bull because I am so tired. But any drink you want, any topic you want to talk, um, every other week we give vets the opportunity to get on and, and just hang out with me. So a little bit what's going on with me this week. I, I literally just got in about an hour and a half ago. I have been a beach bum for about the last four days. Hey, Ross, what's going on? Um, my daughter flew in for Christmas and I wanted to show her around Florida. Um, I've been living here for six months. I have lived in Florida before, but she's never been. So we wanted to get plenty of ocean time in, plenty of water time. We went up to uh, Crystal River and went on a gorgeous kayaking trip to see manatees. Unfortunately, there were so many people and we didn't get our snorkeling gear that we didn't actually get to see the manatees. But the whole trip around that area was absolutely gorgeous. It's, it's pretty crazy. You're driving along the highway. There's this little town, uh, Crystal River. And you go into it and you don't even realize like half a mile down the road, you take a right and there's like a huge lake system and it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. The weather has been perfect all week long. It's been like 75, 80 degrees with a little bit of breeze. Uh, we were at about three or four different beaches this last week. We did uh, Reddington beach, which we really like. It's a little more chill. It's uh, south of Clearwater, Florida, about 10 miles. Parking is substantially cheaper, and there's just a lot less people, and it's a lot more mellow. Um, Madera Beach is also fun. We were down there today taking a cruise on this really cool pirate ship down at, uh, I think it's called John Pass Village. It's like a little boardwalk area with a lot of boutiques and stuff like that. It was really cool. And then, um, hey, Jeff, how's it going? Aloha to you. And uh, last night, we actually stayed right downtown Clearwater. Um, right on the water, we had a gorgeous view from our balcony. Ate some absolutely amazing food this week. I had probably the best shrimp that I've had in like 20 years uh, last night. I was very impressed with the food this week. We had this pina colada bread. Like, who knew there was such a thing? Pina colada bread uh, with macadamia butter. It was like killer. Uh, we actually ordered a second one before we left because we liked it so, so much. Hey, Angie, how's it going? Oh, that's where you're from. Sweet. Yeah, I live just north of uh, Tampa, and I haven't really been able to get down into Tampa and hang out too much unless my kids are here. But I've been all over the place hanging out this week, uh, multiple beaches and getting a little bit of sun-kissed tan, uh, just Basically walked in the door from the beach, sandy, no makeup, uh, swimsuit still on, but here I am still uh, still doing the show, hanging out with you guys. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? Miss you, girl. So, yeah, that's what we've been doing this last week. Um, we couldn't have asked for better weather. I just, I can't believe how gorgeous it's been this whole freaking week and what amazing food that we've had. And my daughter finally got to taste alligator. Uh, gator is one of my favorite meats along with with mud bugs and rabbit. I'm a country girl. I'm not hard to please. I grew up, you know, on elk and venison and moose and all that stuff. But, but gator, uh, mud bugs, and rabbit are my uh, meat of choice. Michelle says, good here. Wish we had swimsuit weather. I was just hanging out with Michelle last week in Ohio, and it was it was cold. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It was, it was really cold. I... Uh, I hate the cold. You know, I love the mountains, but I, I hate the cold. I grew up right outside of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. I grew up where it would be like 60 degrees below zero. Um, it would snow like seven to nine feet a night. You know, you'd be driving along in like these huge walls of snow. Like it, it was crazy. And, you know, never once did we ever have a school day that was a they called off school. Not once in 12 years of going to school in Wyoming. It was like, you had to tough it out, man. That was it. You had to walk to the bus, go to school every day, and no excuses at all. But, so that's what I've been doing this last week. Had a lot of fun. If 
finally got to get a little tan on and, and just chill and relax. And it's been really, really mellow. But I'm really, really tired from driving because driving in clear water stresses me out. <laughs> it's like, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. There's, you know, it's the holidays. There's so many people down there. And something new they did at Clearwater is they put a ton of blue canopies up there that you have to rent. And that block the view like if you if you don't want to pay for the canopy and you're going to hang out in the back for free all those canopies are blocking your view so i'm not real crazy about that i don't really like that but we still found a really good spot um the weather was not as warm as it was when my son was here it was like bath water warm and clear when he was here it was a little bit colder today but it, it still wasn't bad once you got in it, it wasn't bad at all so and then we got on this cool pirate ship uh sailed around saw some Whew. Some nice ass houses. Holy cow. Some of the biggest houses that I've seen. Um, they were really cool. They're all facing the bay. Of course, they all have these beautiful pools and hot tubs and fire pits, you know, and just like incredible houses that would be really, really cool to uh, at least go for, you know, an Airbnb or something like that. But that's what's been going on with me. Had a great holiday. And, uh, you know, something that was going on the holidays. And I know this happens every year, but it seemed like this year it was a lot of engagements. Anybody else notice that? There was a shitload of engagements and new babies or about to have babies and matching PJs. What was up with the matching PJs and the Paul Bunyan? I'm going to admit, I wanted the Paul Bunyan PJs to match with my daughter. But all these couples and everything that were like matching PJs and getting engaged and stuff, uh, it was a lot. I, I swear, like every day I got on, someone new was getting engaged and uh you know kudos to them hope it works out i was proposed to once around christmas uh i really think christmas needs to be christmas valentine's needs to be valentine's uh fellas if you're listening and you're thinking about proposing don't do it on christmas or valentine's day <laughs> like do it on a unique day that's yours and only yours and that you don't have another holiday to compete Okay, it's not going to make your job easier if you uh, propose on around Valentine's Day and you think that that's going to get you out of trouble later on because you only have one thing to remember instead of two. Like, find a cool day, you know, create something unique and fun and, and memorable and something that is just for her. So that's my two cents on uh, planning engagements and, and proposing anyway. But what else is going on this week? How was everybody's holiday? Michelle, how was your holiday? Did you guys go to uh, Cincinnati? We didn't do a whole lot on the actual day of Christmas. We kind of chilled. Uh, we made way too much food. Uh, my just got a new fridge. My fridge is full of food that I'm that I'm not going to eat because uh, um, yeah, I know it's like totally cliche, but going on a diet this weekend, Friday, actually, I'm going to start a day early because I'm not going out New Year's. I know, boo-hoo me. I'm going to get a midnight kiss from my boo. He's going to he's gonna be busy and he's out of state. So I'm going to start a little bit day early. I'm armoring a, uh, ordering a plate carrier, um, some boots. I've got this straight away down by the ocean. I'm going to start training on, uh, dropping my holiday weight, getting back into shape and uh, getting ready to take on this new yoga pilot program we got going on with Up Health and this really amazing equine therapy ranch uh, called Mending Fences in Ocala, Florida. I'm going to be hanging out there for about three to six months living on the ranch, 400 acre ranch, right in a uh, horse racing country. In fact, it is the capital of horse racing in the entire world. Uh, I'm pretty excited. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to go through equine therapy myself, and I'm actually going to start riding again and going to get some more professional lessons horseback riding because I really haven't been since I was a little kid. But I love horses. They are one of my favorite animals, um, not even having to ride them necessarily. If they couldn't find me when I was little, like they knew to look out in the pasture because I was literally out there hanging out with the horses, just like hanging. Because... <laughs> I, I dig animals. I, I love all animals, domestic and wild, but horses, um, I've always had a really strong connection to. So I'm pretty excited that I get to spend six months with some absolutely 
gorgeous horses and horses that are healing vets through equine therapy. Ross, good old Cal. Yeah, oh, Cal is beautiful. I love that little town. They've got like cool hot springs around there. And then when you get down into the ranches, man, there's some beautiful, beautiful ranches. And I'm sure there are like multi-million dollar horses. This ranch actually used to be a racehorse rehabilitation center that they then came in and made a human rehabilitation center. Part of the treatment that you get there is from equine therapy. Um, and my yoga program is going in and mixing with that and some more traditional therapies. So it's going to be really cool. It's going to be a great experience. They have a fantastic staff, a fantastic director. She's a vet. They've got a veteran liaison and veteran housing. Uh, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. And they have a very, very high success rate at that ranch. And we're just going to like pump that success rate up with this new yoga program that um, I've created with George. I'm pretty excited about it. Ross says, I stayed in Ocala there for three months taking care of my mom. Yeah, I never expected Florida to be horse country. And I never expected so much country music. Even my kids said that when she's here. She's like, what's up with all the country music? We're in Florida. But there is tons of country music here. There's tons of horses and all kinds of Western stuff happening in Florida. But that's enough about me. Let me uh, put the link in. If anybody wants to hop on, please hop on. Let's have a conversation and, and see what's going on with you. I'm going to post this uh, on my Facebook page as well. See if anybody is brave enough to hop on. I guess I'm going to have to like start offering free t-shirts or something for people to hop on. Everybody's like scaredy cat. It's really not that big a deal to come on. It, it's not. You see the link in the comment section, just hit the link. That'll bring you onto uh, the green room and then I will add you to the show and uh, we can rock and roll from there. We can talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about. So what do we got going on in the news lately? So my daughter flight was really, really late last week. She was coming. Her connection flight was in Atlanta. And uh, I didn't realize that it was getting in at one in the morning. And then it got delayed. So she actually got in at two. And then I overslept. My alarm didn't go off. And it's about an hour from the airport. And I was like, holy shit, I got to get to the airport racing at two in the morning to go get her. Um, but I'm kind of thankful that she took the later flight because for the second time in just a couple of months, a passenger was arrested on a flight from Atlanta to Tampa on a Delta Airlines. Uh, this last one was the flight right before her. This woman was just obnoxious as hell. I don't know if she was drinking. She's like a former model, former uh, NFL, like Raiders football cheerleader. I guess she just thought that she was too cool for school and she could do whatever the hell she felt like. She was up walking around the plane. Um, didn't have her mask on. They didn't say anything to her about it. Not that it, I'm a mask person at all. I freaking hate them. But if everybody else on the plane has to wear one, you better have one on too. And somebody said something to her. Oh, the flight attendant was coming with a beverage card. She's like, ma'am, could you please sit down so until we can get the beverage card through? Because you know that they're like super narrow aisles. And so she sat down and she made some remark like, what am I, Rosa Park? And some guy heard her and is like, you are no Rosa Park. This is not Alabama and you are not on a bus. So then she got pissed off and she got in his face and she told him to put his mask on, even though her mask wasn't on. And he's like, I'm eating. I am allowed to have it off because I'm eating. And she just like tore into him. He basically told her, called her a bitch and said, stop being such a Karen. And then she freaked out and the stewardess told her to sit down. She wouldn't listen. And she like clocked him. And then she spilled hot water on another passenger. And so the, the flight attendants basically lost control. They couldn't control her. So they actually asked some random guy sitting there, like, can you help us? And this guy, luckily, he had security background. He got up and, like, threw her hands behind her and walked her to the back of the plane and, and sat her down. And they asked him if he would actually sit there with her for the entire flight because they, like, couldn't get her to listen to anything 
When the plane landed in Tampa, the FBI were waiting for her and promptly arrested her and charged her with a federal crime of assault. Um, so yeah, ouch. You, you do stuff on a plane, it's a federal offense, if you didn't know that. So don't act up on a plane. Don't be a Karen. Ugh, I freaking hate Karens. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she picked an 80-year-old guy to freaking clock and hit on and spit, and she spit on him too. Like, who does that, you know? And there, there was another instant on a plane. I had to applaud this lady. Uh, she said... This kid was kicking the back of her seat and like yelling and screaming and just being obnoxious. And it wasn't like he was three. It was like a nine or 10 year old. And the mother did nothing. And so finally, the lady said, you know, could you please get your child to be quiet? And she turned around. Two minutes later, the kid started kicking her seat again and yelling and crying. And so she just had had it. And she's like stood up and she said, look. I'm, you can parent however you want to at home, but while you're in public and your kid is screaming and kicking my flight, she is like, I am not going to put up with that for the next three hours. So you better step in and be a parent. And the little kid started smirking and she looked at the little kid and she said, what the hell are you smiling about? And the little kid shut up and she's like, you better answer me right now. And the little kid, she's like, you think this is funny? And the little kid's like, no. She's like, you're going to sit there and you're going to either read a book or you're going to watch TV and you're not going to touch my chair again. Do you understand me? And the little kid's like, still the mom did nothing. <laughs> it's like, how sad that you have to like do that on a plane. And I travel so much. I see this stuff all the time. People are such dicks and traveling. God, it just like drives me crazy. Yeah. Let's go Karen. That should be a t-shirt. Let's go Karen. We totally have a t-shirt. My, my friend had this logo that she put up today on Facebook, and I was like, we need a t-shirt of that. It was like two hands like this, said, don't be a asshole. I was like, we need t-shirts that say that. Don't be an asshole. I feel like saying that on a regular basis, especially when I'm in traffic. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was driving with George in traffic, and uh, I'm usually a pretty reserved person, but when I'm in traffic... F word starts flying out quite a bit. Sailor mouth comes out. Let me tell you what. It's it's not a good thing. I get very angry in traffic. <laughs> Especially when I have to drive. In general, Florida drivers are actually... <laughs> it's, it's... We thought it was asshole. I don't know. I thought it was asshole. Um, but Florida drivers in general are actually pretty polite drivers. If you're like on the freeway or a four lane or anything like that. But when you get down into congested areas, they, um, it's just obnoxious dealing with it. It's so obnoxious. The sentence enhancers come out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, Eugene, that's what I, that's, that was my friend and I's perception of, of that symbol is that we thought it was, we thought it was funny. I guess it could be either or, but yeah. So something else going on that I just saw right before I got into the podcast that I was like, yes, 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 yes. I have been following the Jeffrey Epstein saga since it first came out, since I first knew about it. And man, uh, I wasn't surprised that this stuff was happening. It happens all over the world. It's been happening for centuries and centuries and centuries. You know, the rich getting away with absolute murder. And uh, I was really pissed off when he supposedly died in prison of suicide, like whatever, not. But I was really happy when they found, her name is Gilin, not Jeslin, Gilin. I was really happy when they tracked her ass down and took her into custody and charged her. Now, did they charge her with enough? Not even close, but at least they charged her with something. And the trial has only been going on for like a month. And unfortunately it wasn't televised because it's federal court. They can't do that. But right before the show uh, aired, found out she's guilty. 65 years in prison. Now she's probably not going to get, all of 65, as we know as the justice system works. But 
most importantly thing, she is held accountable. Two, she has a lot of dirt on people. Is she going to use that to bargain to get less time? Absolutely. But now we're going to get all these other names that are going to come out. And I'm really, really looking forward to hearing who that is. Now, there's some people that are rumored to be on there that really, honestly, they're going to break my car heart because I looked up to these people. I hope that they're not on the list in the little black book, but it's very likely that there are going to be a lot of people on there that we are very, very surprised to see. Yeah, we, we definitely need the names now. All the records hell have been resealed. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Because there's going to be some deals made, not with just with them. There's going to be some deals made from some other people that they bring in and they start talking to and to save save their face and to save them from getting charges. There, It's just going to be a circle. One of my friends actually in high school, uh, when they finally took him in, he said, oh, it, actually, they had just t taken her into custody. He said, isn't it funny that soon after taking her into custody, all of a sudden they started busting these huge, huge pedophile rings across the country, like tons of them all of a sudden. He's like, I was like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, she's probably giving them little bits of information here and there, and I'm, I'm sure more is coming. Well, I sure as hell hope not, James. Um, you know, I should have my friend Richard Caruso on here. He, to to talk about this actually, because I have so many friends in the business of human trafficking investigators. Um, uh, my friend Athena is a, uh, got like a doctorate in forensic psychology and she's also certified as a human traffic investigator. She works a lot with uh, kids in trafficking as well as some of my other friends. And Richard Caruso, actually, if you guys have watched the show, uh, the movie Felon, that movie is about him. And what's strange is he was a prison guard in that movie um, in, outside of Fresno. He lived in Hanford, California. I lived in Lemoore, California. We were stationed there on F-18 base. We lived there at the same time and like out in the middle of nowhere, California, when all this was going down. And he was the guard for like major, major people like head of the Mexican cartel, uh, Charles Manson, um, like huge, huge people in prison he was the guard for. And he actually is the one that was a whistleblower um, that came out and was like, the guards were pitting the prisoners against each other and like betting about it and making money off of it. And he... And another guard, I believe, are the ones that were the big whistleblowers for that and stopped that in the California prison system. So I should have him on because he had posted something about Gila and he knows a lot about how the prisons work. And when I was watching something the other day, you know, they had brought, I think it wasn't the head of that federal prison that Epstein was in, but she had some big role in that prison but she kept saying you know we treat all of our prisoners the same um we followed procedure everything was done just like we would do with any other prisoner and they kept i don't know if she was in congress or senate or whatever and they're like well wouldn't you maybe have a little bit extra procedure for someone like this and sh she's like oh no you know we've got like the heads of all these cartels and stuff like in their stuff they all get the same treatment now, i don't believe that's true i, I don't believe that's true at all but she didn't want to take any accountability for what happened. And come on. I mean, cameras were turned off. The guards were asleep. Guards weren't paying attention. The cameras were turned off on purpose. And, you know, I would really like to see the autopsy report to show, like, did he really hang himself? Did someone else hang him? That guy was too much of a narcissist. I, I just got through watching the Netflix uh, series about him. He was way too much of a narcissist to hang himself. There is no way he thought he was ever going to actually have to pay for what he did. Um, not after all the stuff that he got away with in Florida, where that sweetheart deal where he could like still leave for like 12 plus hours a day. And um, I think he spent like one night a week in jail or something. And he got to do whatever the fuck he wanted while he was in prison. And then the really sick thing 
he didn't get charged with child abuse. He got charged with solicitation of a minor prostitute. None of these girls were prostitutes. They were all minors that he and Gilan and whoever else worked for him were picking up from middle schools. Middle schools. Girls as young as 13 years old. They were picking them up from poor neighborhoods, bringing them over, you know, to their big, huge mansion, throwing money at them. And when those girls didn't want to continue doing it, you know, he would be like, oh, well, do you have any friends? Because if you have any friends, I'll give you money for just bringing a friend. So they they compared it to like a, a pyramid scheme. And that is exactly what it was, was like a child trafficking pyramid scheme. And he had so many places to take these and so many people looked the other way. It was amazing. They were making jokes about the Lolita Express coming in, like how many kids are coming in this week to the island? Like all these people knew about it and didn't say anything. Like, why would you not say anything when you know a child was getting hurt? Because they just don't care. And it's really, really sad that uh, we've come to this place in society where people are too scared to to stand up for what's right. But I'm I'm really excited to see what's coming out for the rest of that. So again, we have the uh, link up. Anybody wants to come on? Uh, I hope you guys are going to come on next week. Actually, I got to hit my friend up. He's supposed to be the guest next week. I still need to see if he's available. His name is uh, Tony Turner. He is a veteran and he is awesome. He is an up and coming musician and he just came out with this song called uh, Black Water Shine. It's really a catchy tune. He cut it in the studio a couple months ago and he sent it to me when he got done in the studio. And I was like, wow, this is a really, really great song. He's just a good guy, really good guy. Uh, he's got, I think, two or three kids. His wife is really cool. She's got like these big, long blonde dreads and stuff. Uh, very cool family. He does a lot of charity work uh, with the People's Patriot Project and, and other things, feeding vets and all this stuff like that. So he is uh, been getting back into music slowly, but surely, but he's got a killer voice. It's kind of like a rough, gravelly kind of voice. And so I wanted to bring him on, talk about his new song and, and, and see what he is up to as well. But anybody else got stuff going on? Anything crazy happen at Christmas? Any crazy presents or anything like that? still got to buy my son's present. He was supposed to leave Seattle, well, right after Christmas to come to Florida and move, but Seattle got snowed in. I mean, it was insane. People were showing pictures on there. It was, I've, I lived in Seattle for five years. I never saw snow like that. We got it occasionally, but like the streets were completely packed full of snow and ice. People couldn't drive. And he's like, I can't leave. <laughs> like, I'm snowed in. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that melts soon because I've never actually seen it stay for more than like a day or two at the very most. But crazy weather is happening all over. We got those Arctic freezes that were coming down into the Midwest and and, and crazy stuff too. You know, uh, where literally like cows were getting frozen in place. It was it was crazy. And I I'm thankful that I don't live in the cold anymore. Like, I can't take it anymore. Well, week, maybe at the most, and that's about it. Hey, James, thank you. James says, have a happy and safe New Year from Upper Pennsylvania of Michigan. I bet it is freezing cold up there, James. Uh, yeah, I can't even imagine how cold it is up there. Speaking of Michigan, there's a new show called uh, Just Look Up on Netflix with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. And they are professors of astronomy in uh, University of Michigan, in fact. But it was a great show. I loved it. I watched it Christmas morning while my daughter was still sleeping. And some people were like, oh, it's terrible acting, terrible story. But at the same time, it's one of those 16 degrees. Woo, 
it's one of those stories that like you could say it's terrible acting at the same time it's like fantastic acting because they played their parts so well uh it has a lot of parallels with stuff that's going on in society right now i i that's why i liked it so much because it it was about well i won't give it away it was about something astronomy related happening to the planet um and how people reacted to it but it was very similar to how people react to stuff going on in the last couple of years too on both sides being extreme and, and not wanting to work together and cooperate and in the end because they didn't cooperate you know it, it wasn't a great ending or benefit but well it doesn't look like anyone's gonna hop on tonight um i'm pretty pooped tonight because i've been out in the sun for like four days and the sun really takes it out of you, as you know. But I'll stay on here for a couple more minutes to see if anybody hops on. If not, I'm going to head out because it is my kiddo's uh, last night here. And we're going to hang out a little bit more before she has to take off tomorrow. And um, I think that's about all I got. I was kind of trying to look at news that was happening. Um, that Gielan Maxwell is a really really big one that um, I was very interested in. And I've also been watching, I've been watching off and on the Scientology series on Netflix um, from Leah Remney. I watched the first season and I had stopped watching it because it bothered me so much. Uh, pretty horrific stuff happening in that so-called church. I got back on a couple weeks ago and I, I finished the other seasons. Thank you, James. You too. I finished the other two seasons and it's just mind blowing. And I was down in Clearwater Beach, which is the international headquarters for Scientology. And I so wanted to go in front of one of their buildings and just be like, fuck you and send it to Lee Romney because there's a lot of parallels on the Jehovah Witnesses. And there's a lot of parallels in the Mormon church, which I grew up in. That's why I think it interests me so much. Um, it's just kind of uh, cultish behavior and just far out ideas of, of religion that even an alien show that came on, I think it was on Amazon Prime or something like that. It was the first one that didn't sound too hokey that I watched. And I was like, oh, they're actually, it's actually it's kind of a little bit logical and making a little bit of sense. And then they mentioned the Mormons and some of the Mormon beliefs being alien-like. And I was like, oh my God, how did I never like connect the dots before on that? Because it's true. Some of the stuff they believe is, is alien-like. Uh, Scientology, same thing. Ron L. Hubbard was caught numerous times. He's a sci-fi writer. He was caught numerous times saying, what's the best way to make money? Start a religion. Hell yeah, and in fact, a billionaire tycoon um, went to BYU, went on a mission, uh, grew up Mormon, just formally resigned, sent a letter to the president of the Mormon church, resigning from the church, saying, please delete all of my records. He called them out for actually making things worse for, for women and minorities in the country, for hoarding $100 billion dollars. That doesn't even include the real estate that the church owns. It's the same shit the Scientology is doing. They're just hoarding money. Like, they have this much money. And yes, they help people. They help people in the Mormon church, not necessarily people outside the church. Like, you're getting this nonprofit status from the IRS. You have this much money. Why is the equivalent of that money not going out to aid people, which is why you're getting the tax-free status? I really think that tax-free status needs to be taken away from churches. If it is, they will be better with their money. I guarantee you, they will be better with their money and more accountable, and they will be spending it on the people and helping people that they should be and not just hoarding it. That's, that's $100 billion. That's ridiculous amount of money for a church to have just on hand. It just it blows my mind. Well, I could keep talking here all night, but I, I think I'm going to hop off and I'll let you guys enjoy the rest of your holiday break. New Year's Eve is coming up. 
I hope you have that special someone to share it with. And if you don't, give yourself a hug. You're your special someone, right? And I'll leave you with a little meme that I saw today. Let, let me get to it so that I that I say it right. My friend Melissa, who's also a cool-ass hippie chick, uh, another yogi friend of mine in Tennessee, she posted this today and it says, a disco ball is a hundred is hundreds of pieces of broken glass put together to make a magical ball of light. You are not broken. You are a disco ball. So shine bright and get your groove on. And if you drink, come drink one with us here at VRS. Have a great week, you all. Happy New Year. And I'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>